Today we're going to talk about stem cells, which are really special cells in your body because they can become many different types of cells. But when we're talking about them, we're going to start with your regular cells, your not stem cells, which we call differentiated cells. That means they're specialized, that they have a special job. So for example, your blood, your skin, your brain, these are all differentiated cells because they have a job. And like you discussed in the warm up, your blood cells can't really become brain cells. Your brain cells can't become blood cells or skin cells. They have a job and they've kind of turned off the rest of their DNA and that's the only job they do. Stem cells are special because they can become more than one type of cell. They haven't turned off all their DNA yet. And in fact, they can become lots of different types of things, including more stem cells. Now, the very first stem cell that was you was that cell that was created when you became an embryo, when the sperm fertilized the egg and you were officially you. Now, this moment, that cell was going to become your entire body. And in fact, for the first five days, all of those cells in a human embryo couldn't become an entire human. And if that human embryo, or it's called a blastocyst at that stage, it's like a little ball of cells. If it splits up, it will actually become two identical humans or identical twins. So every cell can become a whole person, and we have a special word for that. It's called pluripotent. Potent means powerful, and that means pluripotent means all powerful. So they are all powerful because they can become any kind of cell. Now I'm going to have a little digression here because in a moment we're going to talk more about stem cell research and as you can see these most powerful, these pluripotent stem cells come from embryos. So in order to do stem cell research for many, many years you needed to have human embryos to do that. And scientists didn't create human embryos by fertilizing a lot of eggs. What they did was they used extra embryos from people who had fertility treatments, treatments called IVF, which stands for in vitro fertilization. And you guys may know someone in your family who has done this. Um, people who are having trouble getting pregnant, they go to the doctor and the doctor extracts the eggs from a woman's ovaries and they take some of the man's sperm and they actually fertilize the eggs in basically a petri dish in their lab um, once they have the embryos, then they, they implant a few of them into the woman. Now, if the woman has a baby and she still has some extra embryos left over, um, the couple then has a choice. They can save the embryos for later. They can freeze them in case they want to have more kids. They can actually donate the embryos to other people who can't have children. They can destroy the embryos, you know, just throw them out. Or they can donate them to science. And so the people who've donated their embryos to science, that is the, those are the embryos that are used in stem cell research. Now you'll see in our first video that you're going to watch today that um, now we actually have other methods of creating stem cells so that we don't always actually have to use embryonic stem cells anymore. But now let's continue in human development. For those first five days, every cell could become an entire person. So these are the powerful stem cells. But at this point, we're gradually going to start specializing. We're going to gradually start turning off some of that DNA. So differentiation is going to happen. And what causes differentiation is hormones. Different cells release different hormones, and there's kind of gradients, and they turn on and off different pieces of DNA. And what you end up with is the start of differentiation. This is a 16-day-old embryo which is a human embryo. That's what you looked like when you were 16 days old. And at this point, we actually have three types of cells. We have what we call the germ layers. Now the ectoderm, which is blue in the picture, that's going to become things like skin, sort of also the nervous system. And the mesoderm, the red part in the picture, is going to become things like muscles and some other organs. And the yellow part, the endoderm, um, actually is kind of the lining of various parts of your body like your gut and things like that. Um, so although all three types of cells can become several different things, they've now become somewhat limited as well because for instance the mesoderm can become muscle but it's not going to become part of the nervous system. So we've already started turning off some of our DNA. So these cells aren't pluripotent anymore, they're what we call multipotent which means they have some powers but not that many. 
And as you grow and develop, cells kind of lose more and more of their powers. They become more and more specialized. So as an adult, you actually do still have some stem cells, a young adult for you guys, and but they don't have nearly as many powers. For example, you have stem cells in your bone marrow. You guys may have already known that your blood cells are made in your bone marrow, and all the different types of blood cells are made from the same stem cells in your bone marrow, so they can become many types of cells. But bone marrow can't become a skin cell, it can't become a brain cell, it can only become blood cells. So adult stem cells are much more specialized. We also have some stem cells in your brain. You guys, sometimes people think the brain doesn't grow once you're an adult, although some parts of it don't develop that much. There are some parts that do, including the hippocampus, which is where your memories are stored. When you form new memories, you make new connections and sometimes new cells in your brain. When you exercise and you damage your muscles, that's essentially what you're doing when you're doing things like weightlifting, you're damaging your muscles, then you have stem cells that grow new muscle for you and make you stronger. You all know that if you get a cut, you'll grow back some skin cells. Now, if you get cut too deeply or get burned, you might damage the stem cells that produce your skin, and then you'll end up with a scar. That's where your skin can't grow back. And there are lots of other types of stem cells in your body, but every type of cell in your body is produced from a stem cell that can only produce a couple different types of cells. So as scientists in doing research, we really love to have those pluripotent embryonic stem cells. And in the first video you're going to watch today, you're going to see a way that one scientist developed to basically make any type of cell into an embryonic stem cell.